if you have six months worth of expenses, whether that be in a liquid investment account, a cash value life insurance policy, a money market, a savings account, checking account, or cash, whatever it is. Do you have six months worth of expenses? Put a yes or just put a no. If it is a no, this is your immediate thing you need to work on immediately. What you can do to, to help if there is a crisis that occurs in your life prior to getting the six months, like let's say, okay, I'm finally gonna listen to Denzel. I've been following him for four years, two years, but I'm finally gonna start listening to him, right? I'm not calling anybody out, but that's really what, that's literally what I deal with, all right? I got clients that follow me for years. They don't listen to me, or some do, not all the way. Tell them little things like this. Then when it finally happens, they're like, dang it, I should've did that. I'm like, yes, you should've. And guess what, we're gonna do it now. So for those that said no, this is your primary focus. Primary, gotta make this happen. Have that safety net, because I am telling you, 2024 is gonna be a very, weird year. We don't know the politics in our country. We don't know if they're going to orchestrate another lockdown. That's a possibility. Another possibility is we have what's called a reverse market crash. This is something, this is new language to me. I think, I'm like, what is a reverse market crash? I know what a recession is. I know what a depression is. A recession is when you have two negative quarters GDP gross, right? Two negative quarters, you're now in a recession. A depression, I believe is, I wanna say it's like way worse than that, but there's also multiple other factors like infrastructure problems and also maybe potentially a war in, during a depression, so to speak. Like there's a massive amount of resources being allocated to something and it's affecting the entire nation. Then you have real estate crash. That's when prices drop more than a certain percentage of our home values and then it causes the banks to restrict our credit lines our HELOCs our PLOCs our credit cards reduce 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 or they call loans on people and then people go into foreclosure they now have debts that are underwater right so that's say real estate crash what does that do to the person that was leveraging debt or they were already in debt and then they were, they had some liquidity, some revolving, and now that gets shut off. Now you're, now you're really screwed, right? <clears throat> but a reverse market crash is interesting and I've been doing some homework on it, just kind of learning more. So the, the summary of it is, and if you're taking notes, the summary is you've got an environment where we're at high interest rates and prices are high as well. So we got high interest rates and prices are high in terms of getting loans, high loan amounts, high rates. And then the government decides to lower interest rates when we're already in a high priced real estate market. So what I was reading was if we suddenly start to drop interest rates, interest rates start to come down, what typically happens to asset prices, stocks, real estate, you name it, typically it goes even higher. So they were do. I had seen an example of someone with a mortgage at 500,000 at 8% versus a mortgage at 650,000 at 5%. And in that example, the mortgage payment is the same. I don't know if this is true or not. It was just something I read in the article, but I get the concept, which is like, do you want a lower rate, but a higher price or lower price, higher rate? I'm currently buying a property in an environment where the price of real estate is high and also the interest rate is high as well. But if we go into a reverse market, interest rates come down, and let's say the same property that I'm gonna buy, let's say I waited, the, the purchase price for it right now is 630,000 for the purchase price of a property I'm looking at right now and that I'm currently under contract for, 630,000. The interest rate, because I'm doing a first lien HELOC, once the intro rate is done, the intro rate is 4.99%. When it's all said and done, it might be around eight and a quarter or something like that when it's all said and done. So 630,000 at say 8% would be the same similar cost to say that same home being at 790,000 or 800,000 at a 5% interest rate. So who's winning, who's losing in that sort of a, a, a situation? I, I would assume I, I ought to get the property now, right? In my opinion, I'm like, let me just get it now while I can, while I have the liquidity, while I have the cash, let me build my base. Make sure I have my foundation. 
what it is that I'm looking at and then move forward. And then if there is a reverse crash, then it benefits me because then the price of the real estate would go up. If price, if interest rates don't go down and they stay the same, then I'm thinking we could see a recession where corporations and institutions are just simply not able to keep up with their debt payments, which then what happens to every employee in here? Your jobs are now at risk. If your company, your institution, the corporation, the organization you work for has debt and they have employees, they have a payroll to pay and debt. And if the and if the debt that they are servicing, those rates stay at a high rate and they're not able to refinance anything, who do they have to cut? They have to cut you, the employee. So now you lose your job and therefore that's your crisis. Not the recession, not the real estate you know, crash. Your, your crisis is losing a job, right? So that's like kind of taking a macro situation applying it to your microeconomic household environment. What are the things that are going most likely happening to employees today, right? The thing that it is, should be on your radar is the possibility of getting laid off, fired, or your pay gets cut, maybe you get a pay cut, or your company closes, which results in you being jobless. So you didn't get fired or laid off, you just, the company closed down, and so there's no work. As a result of that, what, what happens? You now go into more debt if you don't have this, which is why if you're an employee, this is your primary concern and for the business owner as well. Cause the same, so the same thing happens here. If we stay in a high interest rate environment going into 2024 or they increase rates, can you imagine that? Oh my goodness. I think it's already like, it's, uh, I think we should stop. <laughs> but <clears throat> if they increase interest rates and you're a business owner, chances are you also have debt, right? Almost everyone has debt that they're trying to pay off, but then you are making a certain amount of income in your business. And now because the employee got laid off, maybe you're a B to C, which is, you know, business to employee, business to customer. Maybe, maybe you're a B to C business and now you have a reduction in clients. So I, myself, I'm a B to C. I go direct to consumer you guys. So if you guys get fired, you're no longer making money. How on earth are you going to pay me to help you with your finances? So what happens is I immediately get cut because I'm a non-essential um, expense. I'm a non-essential expense. I'm not essential. It's essential to pay your mortgage, your car notes, your debts, your electric bill, right? Food, groceries, the, the priorities. So you're a business owner in here. Guess what? You got a reduction in clients and or cost increase because rates stay where they're at or increase. So now you're not able to refinance debt. You're not really able to move things around as easily. Banks are tightening. Lending restrictions are increasing. So it's harder to get debt. Therefore, costs increase. Therefore, what happens? You take on more debt. And if you don't have this to weather that storm for that period of time, then boom, that's your problem. Then you either close business and then you go back to an employee to get a job and then your dreams get crushed. For the employee in the room, for those of you that are employees, you get fired, you're now looking for a new job. The chances of you getting another job within six months, when you have six months of expenses saved, the stress is much lower, you're focused on where can I go? What's my strategy, right? Where can I go? So in my opinion, the, the, the strategy,